I was raised in a household with no religious participation or instruction. We never attended church, and my mother did not speak well of her religious traditions. My father never really, really weighed in on the subject. As a teenager and a young adult, my particular lifestyle was working for the weekend. At that time, I partied, abused alcohol and drugs. A few years after graduating high school, I was visited by a former classmate who had made a big change in his life, and he wanted to tell me about Jesus. After some conversation, I explained to him that it wasn't for me. He was pleasant, and he left on good terms, and a year later, he came back. I'm glad he did. We had another long conversation, and in order to cut the conversation short, I still told him I would look into it never making a commitment. The following year, another friend, who was a roommate of ours, started attending Abbott Loop, a very large change for this gentleman, and also a man at work who attended Abbott Loop began to speak with me. I finally accepted an invitation to church, and while I was there, I felt the urge to respond to the invitation to go forward and to accept the Lord as my Savior, and I did so. However, I didn't connect with other believers and did not live the lifestyle of a born-again Christian until Joni and I began to attend church on a regular basis. This still was not what I would consider the moment of truth about my salvation. I had struggles and concerns and much conflict in my life. My parents lived outside of state, my father was ill, and my mother was attempting to take care of her on her own. I had other family problems and worries. Life was wearing me down and things seemed rather hopeless. There was this very hollow place inside of me, and it was growing by the day. Finally, it all culminated in a moment of brokenness where I confessed I could not deal with it all. I was at home by myself, and I truly asked the Lord into my life, a very emotional moment for myself. At that moment, things would be all right, regardless of the circumstances and the concerns that I had. If I had, I would put my trust in the Lord and reliance on Jesus. There was no crisis that blew up. It's not a drugs to Jesus story, but it was a place of total humility and brokenness where I realized the hollow place is only filled by Jesus, just as God planned. I want to be clear. I don't want to sound hollow or trite. In this moment confirmed without any doubt that Jesus is my Savior, and in spite of life's circumstances, in spite of my sin and shortcomings, I have the assurance of His grace, the assurance of His promises, and the truth of God's Word. That assurance is the joy that underlies all circumstances. I have seen God's hand in my life throughout the years, in my marriage, in my business, in my friends, and in my church, including this church. I settled up much of my past, made things right with people that I had wronged and hurt, for God showed me the things I needed to address. Not all at once, but moment by moment throughout the years. I try to be more sensitive to God's leading regarding my weaknesses and my sin, particularly my temper and my my impatience, trying to be slow to speak, quick to listen. When I stay close to God, I find that I can better address these weaknesses. However, when I am distracted from God, these weaknesses tend to control me. I recognize this and realize I must continually, moment by moment, rely on God. I give thanks every day that God gave his only son for a wretch like me and saved me from myself.